It's Monday, 22nd of March. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony, and today marks our 21st consecutive episode, and they said it would never last. Uh, while we're enjoying our small anniversary, let's see who else is celebrating today. Uh, many happy returns to actress w- Reese Witherspoon and to Suzanne Sully from the Human League, a woman who many ro- might remember turned blank face disinterest into an art form. Uh, happy birthday also to Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise, uh, who is scheduled to be born on this day in 2233. So live long and prosper, everyone. Uh, we'll be right back after this. If you enjoyed this show, please consider supporting us. Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash demolition news. Now, I've seen some dodgy machine operations in my time, mostly when I'm behind the levers, actually. Um, I've also seen some criminal machine neglect as well. But this is the first time I can recall reporting on the police having to intervene because a machine was being operated so dangerously. Uh, But a digger driver has been sentenced after police were forced to stop him causing chaos on a Blackburn demolition site. Uh, Blackpool Magistrates Court heard how Peter Walling's company had been contracted to demolish a former medical centre in Blackburn and clear the land ready for development. Uh, Between the 15th of November and 6th of December 2018, Four separate incidents occurred on the site when an excavator operated by Walling uh, caused damage to an underground cable and a substation. You really wouldn't want to be messing around with those, would you? Uh, the, damage caused, uh, the, the damage caused loss of electricity supplies to the local area and repair costs to the electricity, to, electricity supplier of £49,000. An HSE investigation found that Walling didn't ensure all services have been disconnected and ignored warnings from Electricity Northwest to stop work when low voltage cables were first dug up by his excavator. He only actually stopped when the police were uh, called and attended the scene. Uh, Walling of Mellor in Blackburn pleaded guilty to safety breaches and was sentenced to 200 hours unpaid work and received a 10-month prison sentence suspended for 18 months. Uh, He was also ordered to pay costs of £7,000. You can read more about that one over at demolitionnews.com this morning. And thanks to our mate John Woodward for bringing this one to our attention. Now, while some might lament uh, the disappearance of the UK's industrial heritage, there are some that will probably be rubbing their hands together at the prospect of winning a new project up in Skipton in North Yorkshire. Uh, Craven District Council has been given the green light to build its new depot and several industrial buildings on the site of the appropriately named uh, Engine Shed Lane. Uh, But first, the former locomotive buildings on the site will need to be demolished as part of the £2 million development. The client is Craven District Council, uh, Council, and both Ellison Construction and Sutcliffe Sutcliffe Construction are thought to be uh, vying for the build portion of the job. But the demolition element has yet to be let. Uh, Our thanks, as always, to the Builders Conference for keeping us abreast uh, and keeping you abreast of um, all that's going on with construction leads and tenders. Uh, You can find out more and find more project leads like this one over at buildersconference.co.uk. Now, this one actually landed literally as I was preparing for today's show. Um, So you're hearing it at basically the same time as I am. Uh, The National Federation of Demolition Contractors uh, has today launched a new mental health and wellbeing hub over at its website, which is demolition-nfdc.com. The hub apparently acts as a central port for the NFDC's own mental health and well-being resources, along with signposting to third-party information. Uh, given our discussions last week, uh, this is timely in the extreme. Uh, it's uh, This is not in the statement. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. It, it, one of the things that struck me about the statement is it, it, this isn't mentioned in the statement, but I, I know that our mental health and mental health awareness has been a key part of the – or a key theme of Holly Price's uh, presidency. Um, so um, – not sure why that wasn't mentioned, but hats off, Holly. Obviously, you're still pushing, uh, literally, as your presidency is winding to an end. 
Um, apparently, information and support tools are also grouped by issues such as stress, financial well-being, and supporting others, and by assets to download, watch, read, so, or watch or read, such as posters, videos, or articles. Uh, according to the statement, improving mental health and well-being in the industry is a long, long-term strategic commitment for the NFDC. Uh, you can find out more about that uh, at, um, at demolitionnews.com, or probably easier to short-circuit the whole thing, and just go to demolition-nfdc.com. Now, we, we, as, as speaking of the NFT, this NFTC, as we actually were, um, later this week, uh, the UK's National Federation of Demolition Contractors gets a new president. Um, Holly Price's two years in the hot seat comes to an end. Uh, so unless something truly cataclysmic happens between now and Friday, and frankly, after the last 12 months, who would be surprised? Uh, that new president will be William Crooks of Derby-based Cowardin Demolition. And I'm delighted to tell you that William actually spoke to us first. A couple of weeks ago, I recorded an interview uh, with the incoming president, and we discussed how he has dedicated some 15 years of his life to the Federation, uh, the significance of the NFDC appointing its first ever female president as his predecessor, and much more besides. Uh, I think perhaps the most memorable part of the interview, as far as I was concerned, was when I asked William about his hopes for his two years in the NFDC hot seat. And he made it very clear that his presidency is not about him. Rather, it is about the Federation's members. Would you like a quick look? Good. Imagine it's your last day as NFDC president and you're looking back over the past two years in the hot seat. What would you hope to have achieved? I think the biggest thing uh, is that when the members say, well, William did a good job, I think he can't do much more than that. And I think we're missing a trick with our representation uh, to the government. I think we've been working on that. It's important to keep that channel open that, so that if we've got problems, we, we can speak to someone within government to, to try and get those problems on the agenda. Pretty refreshing, right? Uh, we will be showing the full interview with William Crooks uh, tonight at 6pm. Uh, it's going to appear simultaneously on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, and of course on uh, demolitionnews.com. Uh, I hope you can tune in. And speaking of tuning in, on Thursday this week, the construction industry's answer to the Avengers will assemble once again. Uh, I will be joined by fellow members of the Construction Collective, uh, Peter Haddock and Nick Drew, at 6pm UK time on Thursday. Uh, following the success of our last show, in which we looked at the issue of skills and apprenticeships, we will be turning our attention this time to the subject of technology. Um, and it's going to look a little something like this. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, quite pleased with that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm uh, looking forward to bringing that to you. Uh, I can't tell you too much about it as I'm currently sworn to secrecy. Um, so why not join us at 6 p.m. on Thursday on Facebook, YouTube, Demolition News, IGTV, and anywhere else you care to find us as we take you to, to and possibly beyond the very cutting edge of construction and demolition technology. That just about wraps up today's show. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place for another Breakfast Show. Oh, excuse me. Too much coffee this morning. Uh, until then, have a great day and thanks for watching.